And you must also understand as to why the hackers, I'm not saying you are the hackers. Maybe I can call you alleged hacker or penetrate. We did not hack in, in this specific situation. We were, uh, in our slideshow, we clarified the legal methods we used and to just reiterate, we use the SASA publicly available systems to um, generate our data. The issues of Popia Act are very critical are very very critical um poppy act if you if you have read the law um only applies to public and private companies in capacity we are acting here today as individuals um and in a personal capacity which means poppy act does not uh, stand any value in in this investigation i will use intruder alleged intruder we are concerned citizens who said we found this issue we don't know what to do and when you search up, all, all we did as, as responsible citizens was call the Sasa hotline. Um, as a matter of fact, in, in all instances of, of... Guys, so following the last video I made where this Stellenbosch student actually exposed uh, Sasa and the fraud that's actually going on Sasa, where Sasa actually were alleged to have paid money to dead people. Sasa has actually been paying money to fraudsters. Sasa, some fraudsters have been using young students' numbers uh, to really receive their grants even before they turned 18. Um, I really saw most of your comments on that video actually encouraging the government to hire these two uh, students who could help probably work to strengthen Sasa and strengthen the security uh, you know, system so that you know, Sasa, Sasa could have a much more robust security system and all that. But then I stumbled on the comments by the ANC members in parliament, especially after that video. I thought it's really interesting because for me, it really gives me an idea, an overview to understand how the ANC thinks. Because you see, in Africa, we're actually, you know, working towards um, an Africa 2063, where Africa really tries to really fight for, um, you know, a really democratic continent, a really democratic and, you know, information secure continent so to speak and so when we see this kind of efforts by young uh, africans trying to really do something to really help their countries many people actually especially from your comments you actually encourage these young stars to be uh, encouraged but the you know the responses i really got from these anc members regarding the expose by these students from stellenbosch university actually really surprised me and so i thought that i'd just put them together to really get into the mind of the ANC, uh, you know, government and really understand how how they think and how they really perceive, uh, you know, these kinds of efforts to to help strengthen the different forums and sectors of society. So let's just quickly listen to this ANC member who actually, uh, you know, tr almost critiqued these Stellenbosch students and almost called them hackers for exposing uh, the fraud that's actually going on in Sasa. Let's listen quickly. First and foremost, as the African National Congress, we are not synonymous to corruption or fraud. In other words, as a matter of principle and fact, we don't support any forms of corruption, fraud as the African National Congress. And I'm saying because I introduced myself as the member coming from that organization. Uh, maybe it's important, first and foremost, to welcome the presentation. But I must say, Honorable Chairperson, the, the allegation that was made in the media by the student, allow me for the ease of reference, it's not disrespect to say the students because I don't want to have difficulties in, in pronouncing their name. Uh, if you are to... Uh, it was technical, the, it was technical, the allegation they made. I thought it would be important, uh, even if they put in the layman's language, also to share with us that technical issue. So that, you know, if you come and say that we need to improve the system and you don't demonstrate technical issues, you know, because what one of the things that arose, you know, and I think they must confirm, they confirm that they use agrorhythm, which means you can use agrorhythm, chairperson, even if it's a simple things, you know, to, to, to hack as well. You can use that. 
It can also manipulate the numbers. It can, it can does everything, you know. The issues of Popia Act are very critical. Are very, very critical. I will use intruder, alleged intruder. I'm not saying you are the intruder because uh, further details, if that you put, need to be able to do that. But, uh, Chairperson, I think the minister has said it, that, you know, in the interconnected world, vulnerabilities of the various institutions, it, it's a possibility. And I'm not saying it's a fact, but Sasa will speak for themselves. So lastly, Chairperson, I will, because, because they did not present a technical question, technical issues, they are they just the one to collaborate without technicality. I'm not going to ask them technical questions they did not present, and by request and by design of the presentation. But for me, I'm very committed that we need a minister. Remember, you don't seek collaboration because I would appreciate that the student must also go and present before the department, uh, and and whether the de department decide to collaborate or not to collaborate with them, it will be their businesses. I'm saying, I cannot have an attempt on the, on the uh, country's national security system with a view to seek to collaborate with them. It, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, and actually, there's this other second one that really shocked me so much. I think his name is, um, you know, Honorable Muramaila or so. And he actually, actually sounds like a detective who sort of like threatens these guys to, you know, sound, sound like in a way that they've actually committed a crime or they, they might have committed a crime which probably would lead to some kind of trouble and all that. Let's listen quickly to what he says. Chair, the actions of the students cannot just be taken at face value as a fact. We really need a conclusive report to guide us on the extent and of the legality of the students' actions so that we do not find ourselves legitimizing potential unethical actions or contravention of legal and ethical frameworks. And, and I, I'm sure they are quite aware of those sort of things and wouldn't want to go into that, but I request really the department to really delve deep into those sort of things. And this is all to say, Chair, that uh, the base of which this item is considered is based on CSA and the, the public uh, media. So I think this committee has not been empowered with a report which has investigated these claims and provides evidence of whether the students are alleging is true or not. I may, for instance, would have wanted to understand the social background of the students, and it would actually be unfair to them to raise that matter here. It's a private matter that can be answered to the department. The department will be uh, capacitated to respond to such a matter when they bring back the report to, to us. Yeah, so this is actually, for me, it's really shocking anyway, because I'm, I could feel how probably, you know, dispirited these youngsters could be um, in that the fact that they think that probably they've carried out a heroic event in trying to expose uh, fraud, especially them being primary victims. I think one of the guys actually, you know, had his, I think both of them actually had their own numbers being used to collect these Sasa grants for a long time, and they really couldn't have access to it, and this is why they were motivated to really come on and to have these kinds of feedback or responses from these um, members of parliament actually could actually be a little bit dispiriting. But anyway, there was this um, action essay MP. I think she was the one who really countered most of these uh, comments from the ANC members and really spoke really what I would have expected probably an MP to really respond to these guys um, from this perspective. Let's listen to her quickly from Action Essay on how she really articulates the effort these youngsters have made in trying to contribute to South Africa's um, you know, security system in a quite positive light. Thank you so much, Chairperson. I want to acknowledge these two brave youngsters for standing up for their country and being passionate about doing right um, to their fellow peers. Chair, I want to tell you this. In July 2023, 
Bonnie Songs and Elizabeth Raiders blew the whistle on this very matter that we are addressing here today. It was not the first time. I'm glad that it's finally getting the attention that it deserves. In my possession, I have an email dated the 19th of the 9th, 2023. We are now sitting here almost a year later, addressing the very same issue. From Bonnie Songs to there's a Brenton van Fried and a Maputi. I want to read that email to you that actually takes us back to July that year. I've received a message also from Elizabeth Reiters, who's an activist in the community of El Dorado Park and who assists beneficiaries, and she writes to me, I'm an activist and work on a daily basis directly with beneficiaries. Last year, around March, we started getting queries of beneficiaries who turned 18 in 2005 and tried applying for the SRD, but all of them got the message, grant already active. We hereby informed SASA about it and as these cases were coming in, the account would get blocked and the beneficiary would have to reapply. In this process, beneficiaries lost some months that were supposed to be paid to them. Later in the year, we noticed that it was not only 18-year-olds, but even beneficiaries who had lost their jobs and tried to apply. Sasa has been working with us trying to resolve these cases, but the problem is still persisting as we still deal with these cases on a daily basis. I also have in my possession the email written on the 19th uh, of the 9th, 2023 from Bo Bonnie Songs to Maputu, as well as Brenton. Good morning all. This matter of unauthorized applications for SRD grant is very disturbing and it needs to be attended urgently. I've personally reported this in July 2023 and Mr. Maputu phoned me and I tried to explain my suspicions and my son was also a victim. The perpetrator of this offense has probably accessed these grants and worst and painful part is that I reported this matter to Sasa, provided the details of the victims and Sasa hasn't acted to date. Sasa has failed the eligible beneficiaries because this could have been stopped immediately and ways to prevent this could have been created already. We demand Sasa to investigate this matter and treat as this as a matter of urgency. This would be a concern that all these young adults were born in 2005 and all experiencing the same predicament and that, and that alone is raising suspicions. It's totally unacceptable that the fraud is at a high scale at the moment. Every 18-year-old trying to access to apply shows grant already active. This needs urgent attention and needs to be investigated urgently. Below are the details of affected eligible applicants as samples. So, Chair, I think what is shocking is the fact that um, this is not the first time this matter has been raised. It's probably been raised a hundred times. I want to ask, why hasn't this been, matter been flagged uh, previously? And was that email attended to? What was the response? How did the department act on it? I also want to say my concern while I'm sitting and listening to everyone is we're going to now take another, I'm not sure how many years, to investigate and try to resolve something that is blatant that has been raised by so many people from different provinces, from different spaces, and yet we are still going to sit here and say we are in doubt. This, with no consequence management, and La Minister, I think in my maiden speech I said to you that the corruption, alleged corruption in this department is rife. And I say to us, I say to you, listen to this committee. There's a lot happening in Sasa. In, and it's going to take time to, to sort of reveal all of this. Um, the reality is that there are millions of vulnerable people at this moment going hungry as we speak. There are millions watching and depending on this committee to find a resolve to the, what is happening. Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah, brilliant. So anyway, um, I think this is a point where, for me, uh, I was really impressed by these Stellenbosch students and how they really bounced back, so to speak, in their responses to these questions. And, you know, 
from these guys, I could actually feel the warrior character of the South African. I know many people have criticized South Africa to be a really violent state or violent space, so to speak. But that violence, so to speak, in my own reading of South Africans, seems to have built the South African people to be really tough. And I could see a lot of that toughness in these guys as they responded to this um, MPs, you see, the boldness and the confidence and the maturity in a way with which they responded to the critique they received from the parliament. For me, I was really shocked. Let's listen quickly to how they respond. And I'll be back with the most recent report on what Sasa is actually doing to really confirm the expose these guys have actually exposed as regards the fraud going on in Sasa. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to thank the seven honorable members for, for giving us your very valuable and very very good input in 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 the situation and um, regarding our presentation. Um, and we'd just like to, you know, respond to, to a few of them and engage with you and, you know, to further gauge um, the, the impact you are requesting. So um, to the first honorable member, uh, we, we thank you very much for your, for your input. Um, we are here today and were invited to present our findings on the SRD uh, grants in a layman's um, terminology so that everyone who is here um, understands what we are presenting. We would definitely like to personally provide to you, you know, technical specifications if you would like, but we are not in our capacity here today to do that. We are asked, we were asked to come here today to present just non-technical specifications on this. Um, secondly, we would like to address those allegations that we, we got from you about us hacking. We did not hack in, in this specific situation. We were, uh, in our slideshow, we clarified the legal methods we used and to just reiterate, we use the SASA publicly available systems to um, generate our data um, from, from, so we were able to put ID numbers in their system, publicly available, anyone could have done it, and get a response. Thirdly, in the capacity of Poppy Act, um, we are not companies. Um, Poppy Act, if you, if you have read the law, um, only applies to public and private companies in capacity. We are acting here today as individuals um, and in a personal capacity, which means Poppy Act does not uh, stand any value in, in this investigation and briefing. Um, finally, we would love to welcome your idea of a report and in, in going into an investigation and we want, um, we, we support your idea of, of going to the department and asking them for an investigation to the situation and we, we thank you for that valid input and we support that. But secondly on that with your idea of facial verification and we, we completely support this. Um, we understand that Sasa has told the public and came out publicly that this facial verification is in place. Um, but after our interview, Mr. Cedras did phone Sasa um, as in a public capacity to the hotline and requested that can he get the SMS facial verification link um, so he can sort out his application and resolve the issue. Um, this was completed on um, last week. Uh, he'll, he'll probably break that down further when, when we go into the I think fourth MP's um, uh, response, but we did not get any facial verification link. We were told by the SASA person, the, the person on the call center, which we reached out to, that there is no system like this in place. Um, the EKYC or EID verify facial system has not been put in place. We maybe can assume that maybe that people haven't been trained on it yet and it might be in place, but that's just an assumption. And what we can factually tell you is we were told by Sasa on the phone that the system is not in place. In response to the DA honorable, honorable member, you, you, you asked us about our timeline. So I want to give you a, a, a timeline of the calls that I've made to the National Sasa helpline. Um, and I made these calls in my personal capacity as a citizen and I was trying to raise the issue of my identity having been stolen. So I made the first call on the 2nd of October, and in this call I was told that I would receive a response in 24 hours, a SMS link to verify myself. I then made two calls to the, to the hotline, 
on the 11th of October. And the, the, the first set of these calls, I first tried to call their regional call centers, but what, what, what happened was I was unable to reach any regional office of SASA. All of the numbers either said that it does not exist or it would answer immediately, but there's no response on the other end. Then the, the, the final call was last week Thursday, I believe, and in this call I asked them if my application has been marked as fraudulent. To this date, my application is still not marked as fraudulent. And in this call, I also asked whether it would be possible to verify myself via the SMS link that was talked about on TV. The person on the other end told me that they do not have the system in place yet on their side. Then, in response to your second question regarding whether or not we've been approached by banks, uh, I would like to confirm that we have been approached by banks, but uh, we will not be, be naming those. Um, just a final thing to add to Joel uh, as a response to the, the Democratic Alliance MP. Um, you, you asked us if the, the students in the Stellenbosch University survey um, was, uh, we, if we asked the students if they knew these grants were for, for destitute people. And as a response to that, we'd like to say that, um, you know, many of these students who we, who we verbally consented to this didn't even know what SASA is. Um, we had to explain to them that, this, that there's this thing called SRD 370 where unemployed people who are in extreme vulnerable situations have access to this. And, you know, we compared it to the, the American COVID grant, you know, to, to try and explain to them. But even the students who did understand were, were pretty shocked, who, who did have a prior knowledge of this, they were shocked. They, they didn't even know that it was, it was possible for them to apply and would have never personally thought to, to apply in their capacity as a, as a registered university student at tertiary institution in South Africa. Uh, the fifth uh, responder, I'm not sure what political affiliation you are, but um, we we welcome that that story. It, it's a very tragic story to hear. You know, people who have been battling with this issue of of grant fraud since J uh, J July 2023. Um, that is actually when when my grant was was stolen because I turned 18 in July 2023, and I was immediately paid out a grant in July 2023 which, you know, it's, it's a very, very sad situation that the most vulnerable actors in South Africa don't even have a way to dispute that the re uh, phone number registered to, to their SASA grant is not theirs, right? Um, in all our cases, the phone number used um, in, in, in the SASA application was not your personal phone number. Um, so it was a, a fraudster's phone number, and um, they, there's no way at all to, to you know, um, change this online or dispute it online. The only way you can do it is, is phoning the call center. And as Mr. Sedras has said, he, he tried that um, multiple times. And today, to this date, um, they, they still have not resolved their, their, that issue. And... and the phone number linked to his SASA grant is not his. It's a completely fraudster's ID numbers. Look, on, on the SABC interview, we, we had the delight of, you know, engaging with someone from SASA who we, we did try to reach out to before. Um, and, and we weren't doing this from a, oh, I'm a, you know, executive or I'm a, I'm a person who's found this. We are concerned citizens who said, we found this issue. We don't know what to do. And when you search up, all, all we did as, as responsible citizens was call the SASA hotline. Um, as a matter of fact, in, in all instances of, of this issue, when, whenever SASA says, you'll, you'll, you'll probably hear them say it, it's, we urge people to call the hotline. But the hotline is not equipped to, to deal with this many fraudulent cases, as we've seen with Mr. Sedras. Um, they are not able to, to deal with all of these people, you know, especially when... I remember when, when I phoned the SASA hotline, I, I, I was on hold for 30 minutes and then the phone just died. So when there are this many fraudulent cases, it's important to understand that there is no quick and easy fix. You, you can't say everyone must call the hotline because there are too many cases of this. I'm not sure if Joel has anything to add to that. 
yeah brilliant guys so you could see it's it's uh, really this is a really interesting video for me anyway but i think we'll just quickly go into the final report i don't want this video to be too long but there's a final report that actually confirms what uh you know that says that sasa is actually confirmed that sasa confirmed what the Stellenbosch students actually alleged and you know there's a report among daily maverick that really breaks this down really brilliantly so it says that Stellenbosch students fraud frailty warning on Sasa grant system, okay? Um, if you remember, the ANC minister actually gave the minister of um, uh, social development, her name is uh, Nokuzola Tolashe, 30 days to kind of like conduct an investigation based on the allegations that this Stellenbosch student actually brought forward against fraud in Sasa and really report that and then provide some kind of like report to the um, uh, portfolio committee in parliament. So that investigation has been done and there were lots of things that the students exposed that uh, the Sasa investigation also found, uh, you know, correlating. So it says that the South African Social Security Agency's IT systems vulnerabilities to fraud have been confirmed, but yet the agency hasn't formed any action plan to address the chaos. It says that vulnerabilities in Sasa's IT system were confirmed at a Parliamentary Social Development Committee meeting on the 27th of November uh, 2024 following a 30-day investigation requested by Social Development Minister CCC Tolashe. It says, however, Sasa's failure to present an implementation plan has left the investigation incomplete. Now, what did the investigation reveal? It says that the investigation confirmed the allegations made by the Stellenbosch University first-year computer students. Their names were Ver Gosai and Joel Cedras, all right? It says that both of them discovered fraudulent activity and vulnerabilities in the Social Relief of Distress, SRD grant IT system. Now, these students, what did they discover? They discovered a lack of rate timing, which allowed them to run queries through the systems thousands of times per minute. They also, they also discovered that there was no way to update an application once it was fraudulently made. And thirdly, they discovered a general lack of verification of details and biometric verification, allowing for mass grant and identity fraud. So these are the kind of like the three points which these students discovered and tried to present to the parliament so that the parliament could really begin a process of trying to close these gaps. All right. So it said the CEO of Sasa, her name is Busisiwe Memela Kambula, she actually said that due to the urgent need for the SRD grant, the system was implemented quickly and that, you know, that was the reason and that they were building the system as they went. And so this was the reason why most of these challenges erupted and because, it, um, you know, it says that this has created challenges in ensuring that it was done properly. So the reason she explains that these porosities exist in the SASAS IT system was because of the fact that, you know, the implementation was done in a hurry and that, you know, they were building the systems as they were implementing them. And so as a result, there were these porosities that they really didn't envisage. Okay. So it says that the SRD grant was introduced during the COVID-19 pandemic to assist people aged 18 to 59 who found themselves in dire need of financial assistance all right and the grant is currently 370 rand per month now it says that the external provider the external service provider that sasa appointed the name of this it i think it's an it firm uh masegari and associates uh they said they were unable to complete the investigation that Sasa appointed them to, to to conduct due to time constraints and a huge amount of data, according to the CEO of this company, Peter Masagari. All right, Masagari. It says that Sasa also admitted that of the five external service providers specializing in auditing and cybersecurity who had been invited to submit proposals to complete the investigation, only one of them responded. Now, CCC Tolashe actually said that all due processes had been followed in vetting the service provider. Now, the faults that Masagari and Associates discovered now with the Sasa system, um, you know, was that uh, Sasa actually employed this company on the 11th of November to begin this uh, investigation. To, to, to kind of like carry out a comprehensive investigation of all its grant systems, including but not limited to child support, disability, old age pension, and foster child grants. It revealed that an extensive scope of work 
was required to address SASA's IT systems fault. It also showed that it says that due to the higher volumes of data than anticipated, the company said the investigation would be split into two phases. Now, um, this uh, uh, ANC MP Altia Stembile Longo actually said that the two-phase plan lacks urgency and further delaying an investigation into the issue with national import. It says that the faults found so far by Masegari and Associates determined that SASA's SRD grant system fell into the medium risk category while the implication of system infiltration carried significant consequences for the public. So anyway, um, after really enumerating the faults, there were kind of like five really deep faults here, problems with ID numbers, problems with um, openness to hacking. It says the system could not, uh, the system is not able to detect shared or reassigned cell phone numbers. And they actually recommended that Sasa should actually do a periodic reevaluation of cell phone ownership. You see, it says that there's mobile money and cash send allow. Mobile money and cash send actually allow fraudulent beneficiaries to divert these funds. Just a lot of problems with the system, a lot. But anyway, it says that after deliberating and really showing, highlighting these problems to Sasa, it says there's been, there's been no action by Sasa. It says Memela Kambula, who is CEO of Sasa, confirmed that addressing the issues in the report was still a work in progress, with Sasa having not yet engaged in dialogue with Masegari and Associates. So Masegari and Associates, they seem to have completed that probably some phase of their work, but Sasa hasn't got in con a discussion with them. It also says that another ANC um, you know, MP, Munyai, said that Sasa was leaving doors open by leaving issues unresolved while the investigation was ongoing, and that Sasa should also urgently present an intervention plan to restore public trust, all right? So that's where the whole case is at the moment. So it appears that Masegari and Associates have actually conducted some investigation, but Sasa really hasn't really gotten back to them. And, you know, the implementation plan and all that still seems hanging in the air. There's no probably clarity on how to proceed with the whole thing. And it's it's just really unfortunate anyway. But anyway, um, uh, it says that Minister Tolashe um, said that collaboration between public expert and governance bodies was even more critical pointing to the rapidly increasing rise of cybersecurity worldwide. And this is why it's really important that South Africa takes cybersecurity serious. I think that these youngsters, for example, who really are skilled, you know, the computer science graduates at um, Stellenbosch University, is really skilled with these things. Should I, I think it's wise to really have some of them really enrolled, um, you know, in, in areas like home affairs. I know Leon Schreiber is actually also looking for staff uh, at home affairs to digitize uh, a lot of the data. So, there's a lot of digitalization that South Africa systems need. The more I really understand and understand all of these things. And so if these kinds of students in Stellenbosch University are available, their labor could actually be implemented and probably compensated with some form of payment so that they can really help rather than criticizing them for being infu infiltrators or probably uh, sort of like hackers, so to speak. At the end of the day, you know, um, these things with cybersecurity are really important now in the age of AI and now that artificial intelligence seems to be turning a lot of issues upside down across the world. So uh, South Africa really, really need a lot of these kinds of investments to really prevent the, the fraudsters and all that. So um, I think this is where I will be stopping for this video. It's getting so long, but the truth remains the fact that, you know, Sasa, at the end of the day, seems to have conducted this investigation and corroborated what these students discovered as the porosities in their system. But there's really not yet any action conducted by Sasa. And, you know, it's kind of like slowly um, and surely would erode public trust in, in Sasa and probably the Ministry of Social Development. But anyway, I don't know what you guys think about the speeches here in this video with the ANC members and the students. Share your thoughts in the comments.